be sure to check out my Patreon for weekly exclusive interviews, extra content on VV and Omi, and building generational wealth, as well as money management tips from experienced whales. Yo, what is going on, y'all? I'm Cavell well, Anderson, and we're back with another video here. We're here with a very special guest, God's Entry, showing us some charts and stuff again, as usual. So, yeah, I mean, how, how's it going, man? Pretty good. How you been? Thanks for having me back. I'm pretty good. Thanks for coming. Thanks for doing this. A lot of people have been requesting you on the channel. If you don't know where to find him, he is on Twitter right now. Um, so yeah, follow him at God's underscore entry. But yeah, um, yeah. what's up, man? Not much, man. Just took a little break for a minute. I had, I had to go uh, visit family and take a little break for myself. I'm always in the market here. So now I want to get a fresh look at the charts and see what's going on here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let Let's see what's going on. What's happening? What What are some of the things you? So you've been watching the um market still while you've been on your break a little? Oh yeah, I can never get away <laughs> from actually looking. I just had to take a little trading break because uh, I was trading pretty hard for almost two and a half years. So I had to go visit family and uh, you know do life for a minute. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm always looking at charts. I can't get away from that. But uh, we we'll start off with here DXY. I don't know, you see my screen or no? Yeah, I can see you. All right, all right. Uh, so DXY is a dollar. So when DXI basically goes up, uh, all risk assets generally come down. So I keep an eye on DXY to see what's happening here. Uh, right now we're coming to a major trend line. Uh, my target is actually up here around 118, 120 if we break this trend line. So if I get a closer view up here, let's go to the daily. I think we'll do something like this. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know if this is going to happen, but I think it's something like this. We're going to come down. And when it, when it's coming down and trending and going sideways, it gives uh, lets like Bitcoin and the general markets go up and give them a little relief. But uh, So we can either come down here like the 105, 106 area, and then it would go back up. We have a double top here and then come down. If we come down, then the bull run is on. But if we break this trend line, uh, all these assets are going to come down. So just generally keep an eye on that. Okay. And so I'm trying to give a market overview, and I'm not trying to be biased here. I'm just looking for bearish and bullish things. So we can make a determination. Uh, let's go to SPY. This is a... Uh, Spy index. I just want to keep reminding everybody of this chart. These candles are six month candles. Okay. We have a six month bearish engulfing candle. This has only happened four times in history. The last time was over here in 73. And we came down for almost two years before we found a bottom. In 69, we came down for 18 months before we found the bottom. And of course, everybody knows 1929, we came down for almost three years. So I'm just keeping that in the back of my head because you never know what could happen. And yes, one time it was the actual bottom and then we went up. But I know it's kind of simple, but sometimes simple works in this market. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, so are you expecting some type of maybe reversal? Do you think that that's likely or you think we're going down still? Yeah, it's me. I still think we haven't gotten to our down to the bottom of the cycle yet, but I try not to be biased because I'm a trader. So if I'm biased, I'm going to miss out on trades. So in the short term, yeah, you go on. back in my head, what's going on here? We still got three more months till this candle closes. So we'll see what happens. Actually, this candle closed as one. Yeah, six, we got, you know, about three more months, rather. And I can't close it, or six more, one, we're a month we in here. October, November, December. We got like four more months here, and this candle closes. So it's a long time, but that's more like a macro type of view. Yeah. Let me go to uh, Bitcoin here for a minute. Let's check this chart out. This is on the monthly. Pretty, actually pretty bullish to be quite honest but right, we look at it just like this and not pay attention to what's going on in the world you know it's pretty tough not to pay attention to all the different uh black swan events that could happen but as a trader i just try to look at the charts here so 
last time on a stochastic, we were down here back in the uh, 15 bear market for 518 days. I got shorter here in the last bear market, like 400 days. I suspect this one to be shorter. So if we're just going by the charts, by the end of this year, we should be starting the next bull run. Once, but we need these, this blue and this orange line to get above the 20 on this particular indicator. This is stochastic RSI. And this is on the monthly. But um, everybody knows this is my actual target. I I believe we're going to come down here because this is the 85%. Yeah. Next with the bear market. So to think it can't come down here would be, in my mind, foolish. So this is definitely still a possibility. So I'm just keeping that in mind. All right, let's jump to another chart here. I hear some bullish things that's going on. We look back in 15, we hit a bottom. We went up for a little bit. We came down, hit another bottom. It's kind of like a double bottom. And that was the end of the bear market. And then we went up. We did the same thing back here in 19. We hit a bottom. We ran up. And obviously, we came down to COVID. But it's basically like a double bottom. So that's pretty bullish. I mean, that can happen in the future, like right now. If you just look at this on the smaller time frames, we kind of have a double bottom here, but we still got to break some levels to confirm it. We got to get above 25,000 before you can actually think we're, we're ultra bullish, like we can actually keep making a nice little run. So basically, I'm not bullish until we break 25,000. So now I'll flip. If, bull if we do break 25,000, does that mean that the bear market is over and things are going the opposite direction or is it just like a short term pump and then it's going to still go back down? Um, I don't know what's going to happen after that, but I would take a trade from 25 up to 32. And 32 is like, would be like where the ball game is. Like that's where we're going to find out if we're in a bear or bull market still. We break 32, it's game on. Okay. But 32 is like the real hard number that we got to get above because we have all this resistance here. We got support, 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 support. And that's when we broke and that's when we dropped. And there's a big gap here between 32 and 25, basically. So if we get above 25, we can get a nice little pump up to here. So as a trader, I'm going to take that trade. Yeah. And we also have the pie cycle bottom. That already signaled. That's bullish. Every time it's, it's signaled, it was the bottom, general bottom of the market. Not to the dollar, but, you know. The idea is you're trying to get 70% of the move. You're not trying to get the whole 100% of the move. You're just trying to be pretty close. So go to another indicator here. This is the hash ribbon. We got a buy signal on here. Generally, we pump, I think it's, if I stand corrected, it's like an average of like at least 60 to like 80%. Once we get a signal here, I mean, I forget how many times we went off, but I think every time except for two, we went up in price. So that's a positive that we have going for us, too. Okay. Come on. So we do have bullish things going on. And then we'll go to the regular my trading chart. So everybody gets a picture here. And everybody here is trying to use your friend to the end. Well, there's a reason why they say that because. It's just how you got to do it. That's how you got to trade. So the trend started up here. Came into it. That was a great short. Every time we hit the trend, there was a short. Short. Right here, we hit the trend. There's a short. Or back at the trend again. So we need to break this level here. We need to get up, do something like this. We need to break up. We need to come down test. And then get through 25. So, oops. something like that. We need to break out of here. If not, we're just going to roll over and, and go to lower levels. Okay. So, as a trader, I'm looking for shorts in this area. But, uh, if it does break, you, you buy the retest, and then the trend is broken at that point. So, you leave that idea. But every time you go into it, you have to keep going with the same method until it stops working. 
that's a projection we would have to have to break out of here. We'd have to pop out of the trend and retest, and on we go. That's what I'm looking for with Bitcoin. Okay. So, Always. Um, so you think you think by the end of this year we could start to see th the market shift over back into another bull run? Happen if we were in a regular overall economic market, like that's a strong market. Like right now, the markets aren't really strong. They're all, you know, they're in fear. Yeah. So, you know, so tough to uh, project that right now because Bitcoin has never been in a bear market when the, uh, the SPY and equities have been in an overall bear market. This is the first time. So we don't really have much data to go against in that situation. But um, yeah. So, but yeah, most definitely, if we're bullish and we break out of this, I'm playing it by the charts. And I'm trying to block out all the news and everything else and just keep trading the charts because the charts don't lie. So if we break this, yeah, we can be bullish. But then with the next hurdle is 25 and then 32. So that's what we're doing with Bitcoin. And obviously with Omi, I won't get to Omi in a minute. But uh, let's jump to ETH here. Favorite coin I trade. Kind of got the same thing going on. Let me get rid of some of this here, clean it up. We're in the same trend basically as Bitcoin. We got a lot of levels we got to break. But obviously, when you come into the trend, you got to keep, you know, I'm going to keep shorting it until it stops working, which is what I'm going to do. Yeah. I think we get a little bounce here. Let me go a little closer. Four hour time frame here. I think possibly we come down and do something like this. Come out here, bounce. Make one more try up here. Maybe they'll fake pump the merge and then drop it. So that's what kind of being bought. Go ahead. I said that's what you're expecting for ETH, the, um, a big drop to come, a, a short pump and a big drop. Okay. Yeah, because usually any sort of news is, you know, sell the news. So, but once again, we break out of this trend, I got to flip my bias and become. Yo. Yo, can you hear me? I hear you. Oh, you, yeah, you kind of cut out. You said you had to flip your bias and then what? I flip my bias to bullish once we break the trend, but. I'm not going to do that premature. Okay. So we yeah. actually get through here and break above like 1900. So. Okay, that makes look, sense. You know, so we're get we're getting close. Yeah. And here we'll go to Omi real quick. So everybody keeps asking about Omi. Well, let me go to one chart here real quick. All right. So everybody needs to realize all coins don't really. You know, gain strength until after the halving. That's when you want to be in your altcoins in the past. So, you know, I'm just going to play that. So we got a long time until the halving. So we're in an accumulation time. Like I'm not trading on me. I'm not interested in trading on me. I'm interested to in accumulate at the right moment because I'm have that trading mindset. But if I were an investor investing in OMI, it says accumulation range, like a proper strategy would just be DCA and it doesn't matter what the price is. You know, so if you say you have a thousand dollars, we'll put a hundred dollars a week in. If this is the coin you want for 2026 for the next bull run, you just DCA. You're not worried about all these prices here. But I mapped this out. This is kind of like a white cloth accumulation pattern. Yeah. We could be down here for quite some time, you know, until the end of the year. And once we break out of this range and actually get above like 0.222 like somebody like me, I'll jump in and I'll throw capital and I'll ride it up. But if I'm investing, you buy all these levels. You don't worry about the number. You know, you don't try to catch the bottom. You know, that's great if you do. But for investing, you should just be DCA and not worry about the price. That's the main thing I want people to know. Like, don't wait for me to say, all right, I'm buying on me. Because I might not buy until we break out. Just because I want to be able to have access to my money. 
and I don't want to take a, a drawback. Like I want to buy here and take a drawback. And I'm not, I don't have access for my money to go into another investment. And that's just the way I look at it. But this is a great accumulation range. It's, you know, in four years, you're going to feel really silly if you didn't buy any worse down here. I believe anyways. That's just my opinion. Yeah. So is, is Omi still one of your most bullish investments? Is that like, is that like what you believe in for the next four four years plus? Hundred percent, hundred percent. They're lead, they're leading more of the whole industry in NFTs. I believe. I definitely agree with that. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like I don't think it's a it's a no brainer to me. Yeah, and and I'm so what? Strong. I've been seeing so a lot of um. Andrew, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I sound so strong and only. Not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. So, so what what keeps your conviction up there when it comes down to Omi? Why why are you so um? I guess as as a trader, you have a different perspective. So so why Omi? Yeah, I like to have an investment. You know, that's besides trading. You know, that I can put money into, and I know it's going to be good in the future. Or I'm confident that's going to be good. That the team can uh, meet all the requirements and keep pushing forward. And just look at the app and all the IP, it's, they're just getting better. And actually them only not being on exchanges right now might be the best thing for us to accumulate. So I believe that was a good decision by them. So nobody can manipulate it. Yeah. I've been seeing, I actually just got a comment today where somebody was upset that they promised four to five exchanges by the end of the year and they didn't do that. And they saw that as a negative thing, as opposed to VB no. starting to do something different. Positive. No, that's a very positive from my perspective. Because if we are on an exchange, the coin would pop, everybody would buy it, then they'd dump it, then you got big money involved at that point. But like I said, big money's not coming into Omi until they can take their money in and out easily on exchange. There's just no value. You know? Yeah. Like I said, if you have a lot of money involved in it and you want to sell, you're going to lose two, three percent just because you want to sell. No, I mean, you know, it's a lot of money if you got half a million dollars involved. Yeah, that makes sense. Or just be happy and accumulate. I won't worry about the price and just DCA. Yeah. It doesn't hurt you. You know, don't overinvest. And the 2026 outlook time horizon, I think you'll be, I think you'll be fine. But it just doesn't mean I'm right, but that's just my opinion. All the altcoins go up when we go into a bull market. It doesn't even matter what coin, really. But being this coin's under a penny, tenths of a penny, I wouldn't invest in this coin if it wasn't even BV involved, to <laughs> be quite honest. Yeah. Because once we get in the bull market, they go into what they call a rotation. And then once all the coins pump, they believe it or not, they look for coins that like close to a penny and under a penny to invest in, to pump. And sometimes somebody's going to pump this coin some point rather oh you think so you think that somebody's just gonna pump it just for the, the heck of it it's easy it's so cheap yeah that's true that's very true you know this goes in rotation i mean all these coins go in rotation oh. we have to be in a strong market we're definitely not in a strong market at the moment so it's a risk so if you're looking to get your money in and out you might be waiting couple of years to be quite honest I mean, worst case scenario yeah i feel like this is this is one of those projects where it's going to take a good amount of time like i don't think that the space is even going to be established until like the next five years to be honest like yeah. nfts aren't even really widely accepted just yet so it's a lot of work that needs to be done and a lot of other big companies that needs to come in and you know start working within this space right alongside VV. Well, definitely, I think VV is the leader, but they're all going to try to compete with VV. For sure, for sure. Like, I mean, I don't I don't really see anybody being able to do that, especially with the partners VV has, man, the Disney being so so close to them. And like we we just saw that you see the first um the first utility drop for the Disney Golden Moments. Yeah, I was lucky. I got that. Oh, you got it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's fire, man. So did they... Any, huh? 
No, I didn't get a good mint, but I got it. <laughs> I always got to try. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's like, that's so bullish. It's, just, it's a lot of great things happening for this company. But, but yeah, anything else in the charts that you, that you see that you wanted to go over? That's about it. I'm just kind of being cautious. I mean, we got the CPI numbers coming out. See how the market reacts to that. You know, that's inflation numbers. And uh, just being cautious, playing it level by level. Just keep in mind, you know, we can pump up. You know, if we get good numbers, they're coming down, the market can pump. Doesn't mean we're in a bull market. It just could mean a bear market rally. But once we start breaking some of the levels I talked about, then you can flip bullish. But we have to break some levels first and just play one level at a time. Um, that's the advice I can give you. Dope. All right. So um, I actually want to go into some some special questions that I have a little bit about the market, about the inflation and things like that. But um, if you're on the YouTube channel, this is where we're going to end the video at. You can actually go and follow God's entry. I'm going to leave him linked down below. But the rest of the video, you'll be able to see on the Patreon. That's going to be the first link in the description. So go ahead, check it out if you want to um, see what else we go over here in this video. And yeah.